Hey Tiffany, um, this is literally my like sixth time recording this video. I have a 20 minute string of recap from all the videos that we've done this year and I was like, oh, this is what we did and ooh, that's so fun, it's great. Um, but then I thought to myself, that's kind of boring, so if people want to watch those videos, they should just go to the YouTube page and watch them versus listen to me kind of talk about what they're about. And then I did <laughs> several different versions of a 2014 wrap up like for me personally gaming getting into the media stuff and all that and then it just turned into like crazy ranting stuff that shouldn't surprise anybody who's watched any of these videos I don't know why this is so hard for me this time um I think it might have something to do with I don't have a list of games just be like hey these are games I love to play check them out play them if they're something you want to play also. I actually have to like come up with actual content to talk to people about. I guess that's what I'm going to try and do for this last time and I'm going to try to like organize it in a way that is as least rambly as possible but I make no guarantees because I'm a rambler. It's what I do. 2014 highlights. We'll start there and I'll try to stay on tack. I went to a lot of conventions and that was super exciting and fun. Um, it all started locally here. I went to Unity Games, which is a 24 hour thing on the North Shore, Woburnish, I want to say. And that one's great because it has a big charity auction um, where everything goes to the Boston Food Bank, which I think is good because not everybody can afford food and people who can't for whatever reason deserve to eat. And then I went to PAX East. And at PAX East, I was on a panel about, I think it was Talk Like a Board Game Geek was the name of it, but it was all about language and board games and how jargon can have a negative or a positive effect on the hobby and iconography and just, it was, I thought, a really interesting topic, obviously, because I was on the panel, but I did actually enjoy being on it and talking about those things and hearing what other people had to say. And then I went to... Gen Con and you were at Gen Con Tiffany and we did completely different things. I demoed for AEG and you did awesome video blogs every day and then at night I disappeared into the seedy underbelly of Indianapolis and you did other things. Probably edit all those videos. The big thing about Gen Con is our event, our I Dark Overlord event, where we had a panel of reviewers playing I Dark Overlord, which is a storytelling game and there's the overlord who has goblins who go out and are supposed to complete this task but they're incompetent and inept and they don't and the cards tell you what you have to incorporate into the reason as to why you didn't complete your task of getting whatever it was in this case it was rescuing the tardis from hulk hulk hogan is that who had it with the help of one of the designers modified it we had that yay nay card so that the audience was the parliament and they got to vote whether the excuse was good or bad. Our reviewer panel, and I'm going to try to remember this the best I can, we had Joel from Drive Through Review. We had Rodney, I think, from Watch It Played. Then we had Tox um, from Crits Happen, now Arcane Wonders as well. Um, and then we had, I want to say Ryan from The Cardboard Republic. I think he was next. And then we had Matt from Board Game Replay, and then we had um, Richard from Rado Runs Through, and then we had Lance, the Undead Viking, I'm pretty sure was next, and then we had Jamie from The Secret Cabal, and then we had Hunter from Weapons Grade Tabletop, and then we had Anthony from The Cardboard Jungle. I'm pretty sure that's everybody. <laughs> And of course we had Eric Samarar, he was awesome and announced everybody and oh, he did such a great job. Then in November I had a super busy convention month. I went to Lobster Trap, which is local here. Some people run it, they send mules to Essen, they bring the Essen games back. Then they host a little small get together, like 150 people to come play these Essen games for four days and that's what we do and it's great. Finish that on a Sunday and on Tuesday I was at BGG, which is where you were also, and a bunch of other people, obviously. You did awesome things like get tattoos, and I did different kind of awesome things, and just demo Pan Panamax, pew, pew, Panamax, the whole time, um, which was fun. I did also have the opportunity to play a Diamonds 
game against Marty and Tony from uh, Roll Dice and Take Names. And, of course, Suze from Board Game Breakfast, the iOS board game goddess who makes us all spend way too much money on games that I swore I would never play because I have the hard copy version sitting behind me, was my partner. She was my partner for this event. And, yeah, so that was really fun because Marty and Tony, something about a scoreboard, I remember. But, oh, oh, man. This wasn't a convention, but this kind of, I don't know why this reminded me of it. We had our super fun reviewer resistance game, um, kind of like in the summer-ish time, maybe right, like, April, May-ish, if not the summer. Canadians are spies. That's all we need to know about that one. That's convention stuff. That was a big thing for me this year. And at those conventions, I met a ton of people, um, just normal people, you know, gamers who don't have anything to do with the hobby other than they game. So possibly the, like, most important people in the hobby, because they're the ones that spend the money to make publishing companies want to have designers design games who then give us media people something to talk about. But anyway, um... I've already, I've already ruffled enough feathers with that topic. Personally, I guess I played a lot of like super great games, and I, I, I think I'm pretty sure I played more games this year that I liked than games that I didn't, and that's good. I think I'm at like nine eighty something uh, games. Played. I think I'm at like 3.30ish for unique games. I'll be honest because I know somebody out there will just totally like throw me under the bus. But yes, a lot of those plays are Loop and Louis. And you know what? You can suck it because my three-year-old wants to play games and my two-year-old wants to play games. And if both of them can play Loop and Louis with me, I will play Loop and Louis a thousand times in this year and count every single one of those plays because my kids are playing games. So I think that's an important point that a lot of people overlook, I'll say, in the board gaming world, is that it doesn't really matter what you're playing as long as you're playing something you love. And that might make some of you drop over dead that I've just said this, but it's true. And that's really what I feel. If you love Panamax and if that's going to be your type of game, play it. If you or like, I want nothing to do with dice and shipping and all of that. Don't play it. Like, no skin off my back. I'd rather you play something you like. Like, maybe you would like something like Citrus, which is a beautiful little pile placement game. And you get to make groves of citrus fruits. And it's very fun. Or maybe you want a silly card game about helping bombs escape to paradise. And that's Boom Runaway. That would be the game for you. Or you want this weird... Eric Martin described it on Twitter, and it's perfect for this game. Platypus type of a game that's like trick-taking, but it's not trick-taking. And it's like set collection, but it's not set collection. Uh, it, a Bluxen is the game for you, then, in that case. Uh, maybe you want a bluffing game, a great bluffing game, a Sheriff of Nottingham. I mean, I had so much fun with that at Lobster Trap. Um, it's, like, it's <laughs> There are just so many types of games that people can play. And whatever game it is that you're going to love, play it. And don't let anybody make you feel bad about it. Yeah, so that was an interesting little ramble, rant. Where was I? Oh, yes, yeah, so I was talking about how I played more games that I liked than I didn't like. And I think that's a good thing. Another big, like, gaming milestone for me this year, I guess, <laughs> is that I started playing Dungeons & Dragons. I kind of played an RPG at... Gen Con, Wilderness of Mirrors, I think. It's about spies and we're all bad people and we all die, basically, is the whole point of this RPG, come to find out. But anyway, I ensured that by being the leader and being as incompetent as possible. You're welcome, team. Dungeons and Dragons, I started playing that this year and good gracious, am I having a good time. Um, I'm not entirely sure the rest of my party is excited, and I'm pretty sure my DM is like, wow, these guys are, oof. but I'm having a great time. I am, what am I? I am a gnomish rogue outlander. I have pink dice, obviously, but I have purple hair and violet eyes, and it's just, 
I'm having a good time. I stabby stab everybody and the stupid big dwarf paladin idiot doesn't do anything. And then, um, I think it was an elf bard. An elf bard? That guy. <sighs> Useless. I helped the community center start a board game program for like an after school offering. I received positive feedback on that. They actually incorporated it into their summer summer camp program on Mondays. There was a board game option for that, and they just followed the whatever. And I think what appealed to people about that is that not all kids are athletes, nor do they need to be. Um, so it's nice to let, you know, nerdy, if you want to call them that, but, like, kids with intellectual pursuits and dreams, give them an outlet that's specifically for them versus like, oh god, you're gonna make me play flag football again? No, why don't we go play board games? You guys, it's really not that hard to set one up, so if your community doesn't have one, you should maybe think about doing it. Or like a senior center! Senior center, senior center, old people need to play games and they love company. But lots of ways that you could bring board games into the community. Uh, my kids really starting to love playing games. My 11 year olds always love to play games, but the three and a half year old and the two year old are really wanting to like, they ask for them, they recognize them and they like want to play them. And that's super exciting. I hope that sticks around. There's a lot of like modifying obviously because one of them is two and one of them is three and a half. And so oh, the game says five and, but whatever, still lots of fun. And, I think that's okay if you have to modify a game and make it so that the kid will enjoy playing it as long as you have plans of bringing back in the rules. For example, uh, Fun Farm by Yellow there. We just started playing that and it's harder than I thought it would be, honestly. But there are cards in the middle and there are like little stuffed animal guys. They're really stuffed. They're like plastic, that foamy stuff. Anyway, they're all in a circle and the card goes in the middle and then you're supposed to roll the dice. You have just two dice and if there's a match on one of the cards, each card has a picture of an animal and then two dice on the corners. Um, if one of those dice matches any dice on the card in the middle, then you grab that animal. So I'm having a hard time with that as an adult, especially when there's like six cards in the middle. So what we do for my son and Oh, my daughter, she really just like grabs things and runs away. But for my son, the three and a half year old, we have him match the dice to what's on the card. So we have him find the, like physically find the match on the card and then grab the animal at that point versus like some crazy scrambly. Yeah. So my kids are starting to play games and I love that. And I've played more games that I like than I don't this year. And I went to a lot of conventions and we've done this spooning meeples thing and it's been lots of fun and sometimes i think about our reception and how well we've been received i mean i don't feel like there's been a lot of negative stuff except for all my controversial <laughs> topics like the ameritrash thing or making kids lose or you know, let's just give the designer some more credit. Yeah, you know, whatever. Um, we've been on several podcasts, and I think that's been exciting and crazy that somebody thinks my opinion is, like, important enough to listen to. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, I think, honestly, honestly, I think my favorite thing about 2014 has been Twitter. And I, for so long, I was against Twitter. I was like, this is stupid. And, you know, when I first started, it was just like board game collages. Like, here's what I played and here's a picture of that. And, but this community is dynamic and it is organic. And I don't really think you can do that. I mean, if you want to be involved and active I there's just the conversations you know a lot of times it's silly stuff like um ducks and snapchat for example but there have been some very good conversations as much as that's possible on um twitter you know board game hour started out so strong this year is like getting people involved with the discussion the topics were always good and it went 
not so great towards the end. But, um, so there was a lot of good discussions like that, you know, being able to connect with designers or publishers or other people to make videos with, like, that's what I think my favorite thing about board games is right now. And I think it kills everybody in my group. I know it does. Um, that I care at all about talking to other people through social media or through these blogs or writing about it. Although they all say I should write, but more, but whatever. Um, that there's always someone to talk to about them and whether they agree or disagree, usually that can be done in a mature manner. Um, but obviously some people are very passionate and I'm not, not guilty of any of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I just think being able to connect with people and being exposed to, I don't know if I want to say the true heartbeat of the community because I obviously Twitter is a very small section and the people that are on Twitter and are on Twitter actively and whatever, but I think you can get a real feel for it. And, you know, the geek, board game geek is still, still where I go for all my information other than the people that I play with every Saturday. Um, but just being able to get ideas or inside info, um, rumor mills, whatever, I just think it's really interesting how all facets of the board gaming community can come together on Twitter and coexist and just have this awesome presence there. In your games giving video, you talked about resolutions. I don't know that I have any gaming resolutions. Um, I <laughs> want to play games. Uh, that's it. And that's what it's always been. Um, I love talking about them, whether it's on these things or whatever the mood strikes me to write on, you know, the, my blog or whatever or um for other people because again they're crazy and think I have something interesting to say uh, I just, just want to play games and I want people to play games and I guess I look forward to helping people play games <laughs> in 2015 um so yeah, uh, that's my that's my resolution for 2015 is just to play games. Bye.